Taking a step back, can you just talk me through some of the main components for a real-time monitoring system? Sure. So um, there's uh, really, uh, I guess, three main systems. There's the data acquisition component, and these are sensors, and they're, the company that makes them is a company called Mistros. It's a, it's a Greek company, and they make a whole variety of uh, sensors, and they're basically microphones. And um, we, the sensors that we used was the R6S, I believe, sensors. Um, they're a little bit lower frequency sensor, and these sensors are glued to the carbon fiber itself using uh, typically RTV or silicone type glue. And then from there, it goes to a data acquisition hardware system. And, and really for all practical purposes, you could think of this as being like, a, like an audio amplifier. It takes the, the data or the signal from these sensors, it amplifies it, and then it digitizes it, and then it, we get a stream of digitized data, digitized um, AE data that goes into a host computer, and then the host computer does the signal processing, and then the storage, and then later the display of the plots. Now, now there is another component to the real-time monitoring, and we had a, a real-time monitoring program that the pilot could watch. And what it is is a, a series of bar graphs for each sensor and then a, a, um, a, a total to the right of that that was all sensors combined. And there was the instantaneous hit count or instantaneous amplitude, instantaneous hit count, and cumulative hit count for each sensor. And so they could see this kind of triplet of bar graphs that would be green, yellow, or red, depending on the parameters that, that we assigned. So that was the real-time monitoring software. And in addition, uh, the uh, total hit count was fed back to the control computer. And so on the main control computer, when they were driving the sub and looking at the compass and other navigation, there was another bar graph that showed the total cumulative hit count and also a green, yellow, or red indication um, if it had gone past our, our assigned threshold values. Um, so those are kind of the components. Uh, and then the, the last part of that is the plotting software, that we would take the, um, the um, 100 millisecond data and the raw data and plot those uh, on um, plots like you've probably seen. Um, Let's see here, I've got, uh, these are all strain plots, excuse me. Um, here's, here's one here um, from DOTF. It's, there's not much on it. Um, and those were, those were really the, the plots. Here's another one. Um, this is from DOTF, and you can see low data here. And then as we go to this higher stress level, you see some bursts of AE activity. Um, so these, these amplitude plots were a main component of uh, how we assessed the hull uh, after a dive or after, after a pressure test. Uh, 